upstairs here on your far right. The f is, that, is that a literal or figurative term? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. What, what do you think Mr. Obama is going to do about those inconvenient truths? Very, very important question. What I think he's going to do, because I certainly accept that he accepts that global warming is a huge potential problem, a huge present problem, and a huge opportunity. If we heard, emanating from the White House within a reasonable period of time, that we were going to have a Manhattan Project on energy self-sufficiency, Think of those terms, a Manhattan Project on Energy Self-Sufficiency, and in the process deal with global warming, which are, I think, simultaneous issues. The American people would get behind that. The American people would finance it, I think, even if it meant having to dig into their pockets a little bit more than they want to, because they realize that energy self-sufficiency is truly national self-sufficiency and national freedom is predicated upon not having another country with the ability to destroy our economy by a whim. So I think you're going to find that global warming is a very high priority with him, but tying it to economic growth, not simply signing the Kyoto Protocols, which I expect he will do anyway, but in fact looking at every facet of global warming in our economy and seeing how we can tie that to economic growth by using uh, our uh, engine of economic uh, powerhouse to rebuild our infrastructure, to uh, incentivize uh, companies to make the technologies, further the technologies that will aid us in dealing with global warming. There's a company, for instance, that is experimenting with a spray-on material that you can spray on windows that will generate electricity. Just imagine that. That kind of innovation does not exist anywhere in the world but here. And Israel, interestingly enough, but that's aside the point. We have uh, technologies that need to be supported. We need research and development money that has not been spent. You know that in the, in the later version of Did You Know, which you saw there, and they're all on YouTube, and they went up through 2007, and I think there's a 2008 version as well. One of the points they make is that Nintendo spent more on research and development in a given year than we spend on research and development and education. Just think about that. Nintendo spent more than we did. That's, that's going to change under Obama. I think he knows better than anyone in this room, certainly including me, the truth of what we saw. That in fact, we have problems that have to be solved in new and radically different ways. Global warming is only one of them and we need to bring new and different ideas and new and different approaches to solving those problems. I think it will. There's a question in the back of the house. Uh, That's the far right. I'm going to listen to the far left. <laughs> way, way in the back. <laughs> Toward, Toward I see the back wall. Uh, yes, the I see you. First floor. Oh, hi. My question, given the size of his mandate, do you think that President-elect Obama will have success against the entrenched uh, the lobbyist system in making changes in the health, insurance, medical situation, all, and also in the banking and credit card and the, the crazy, the crazy legislation that has been passed that allow credit card companies to charge very, very high balances, you know, very high interest. Sure. Do you think he'll have a chance against those entrenched groups? Well, I, I think you, you really answered your own question when you said, given the size of his mandate. Um, and harking back to what I said earlier about his ability to be uh, less partisan and therefore take those millions of the special interests and say to them, look, if you're not with me, then I will find someone who is. And in that way, rally the, the largesse uh, back to where it belongs, and that is in the White House, not in the pockets of a lobbying organization that's able to throw money and other things at, uh, at individuals who, let's face it, uh, money is the mother's milk of politics, as they say, and the only way to undercut that process is to let the candidate or the potential candidate or future candidate know 
that the support of the administration is more important to their future than the support of that special interest group. And that's what I think we're going to see emanating from the White House. One up here, moderately to your right. <laughs> it's always good to see a moderate. And I am a moderate. Um, uh, obviously, Obama energized m a great many young people during the campaign. Consistent with that, is, is there any idea afoot to develop a national service program? You know, not only a very important question, but one that's very dear to my heart. I, I had hoped and actually had uh, sent to uh, Chris Dodd, who's a, a friend of mine, um, an idea for national service that made it, number one, mandatory. Number two, made it uh, in such a way that those less desirable service jobs got the most benefits. So that if you were in combat, you got the best of the best. If you were in the inner city, you got slightly less than the best of the best. If you were lounging around uh, doing something that simply did not uh, make your life difficult and teach you, I think, the things that life ought to be teaching our children and our 18-year-olds, our then you don't get many benefits, but you've fulfilled your responsibilities. I think he very much believes in national service. I don't know whether he's ready to go to the extent, for instance, that Roosevelt did, where he did the WPA and he did the Youth Corps and so on. But I think ultimately we will evolve into that. One of the difficulties, of course, is that they have to be paid. And they can't simply be paid in future benefits. They have to be paid while they're uh, in service. And I assume that that is one of the kinds of governmental mandates which they can't pass onto the states. You know, one of the favorite things that the federal government has done, certainly since the Kennedy administration, is to create mandates for the states, like uh, in the Individuals with Disabilities and Education Act, for instance, where uh, the states are required to offer uh, a level playing field in education to those who are educationally handicapped, and yet the government doesn't fund it, and the states obviously don't have the wherewithal to do it fully either. So uh, we would have to find the money to do it. And that, it seems to me, is a real problem. But I think there are ways to find the money to do it, and I think it's absolutely crucial if we're going to bind our society back together. Uh, one of the things that I have always believed in is that democracy can only survive, let alone flourish, in a society that inculcates self-discipline in its youth. Because the only difference between self-discipline and self-government is a word. The fact is, if you do not have self-discipline, you cannot have self-government. And we have a society where self-discipline is breaking down on virtually every level and nothing is taking its place. If you institute proceeds, procedures, and guidelines, and institutions, and ability to inculcate self-discipline in our youth, then you have the formula that will also prepare them to govern themselves and do it well.